Activists said they have proof that ministers are trying to influence police over Israeli armed firm protests. We're going to read into this more from The Guardian, you guys. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from The Guardian with the headline that activists say they have proof that ministers tried to influence police over Israeli armed firm protests. Palestinian actions said papers showed that ministers attempted to sway police and prosecutors to crack down on protesters. Guys, while you're here, make sure you hit the like button and share it across social media so others are notified of this video. So this is about obviously they are trying to protest the, the, these these protests in particular from palestine action they're designed to disrupt and uh stop any uh of the uh weapons and arms manufacturers that are sending supplies and whatnot to israel now i should be pointed out that um that there has been a great deal of restrictions on uh on protesting uh by by the previous conservative government and I would hope, say the word hope, that Labour would roll back on some of those policies. That's the first caveat. The second caveat is, of course, is that with regards to weapons and, excuse me, weapons and arms and, uh, that, that we send, it is a very low number compared to Germany and America. They send, America obviously is the one that sends the most military, obviously the most weapons and supplies to Israel. Germany are the second largest. We sell about, about one percent of the total uh, exports and whatnot but still one percent is still us being complicit whether we like it or not we are still complicit in what is happening within the middle east well whatever you want to stay on that now and as long as the protests are peaceful um i don't that i think the lengths that the that some of the authorities that are going on certain targeted specific protesters are too much um it also i also think it also depends on the kind of protest that it is now i think for example vandalizing uh like like just stop oil vandalizing like uh stonehenge or an art gallery and whatnot like that doesn't that that for me you know paints a very bad picture for them and their group um Whereas other ones where they're making like loud noises in, in certain places, I think is appropriate, and I think it's it's perfectly it's perfectly fine. But their arguments, obviously, of some of the protests that they do, is because they have to go these extraordinary lengths because they want their voices heard and they want something done about it. And they've gone through, as with most uh, most of these groups, they go through as much legal as much as the legal routes they can sending letters and and going through the, the proper procedures and they get no response they get no answers they don't get what they want so they have to turn to protesting some of the uh, convictions on some of these on protesters have been nothing short but damn right outrageous especially when some of them have been for even more than some of the than some of the some of the basic crimes that are committed in the in 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 England, in England, for for example, um, like you know, the robbery, uh, like violent, uh, violent arms, and it the, the the difference is is it's just ridiculous. Um, like, why are we wasting prison, taking up prison cells time, putting people uh, who are protesting for a couple of, for six months or a couple of years? It's an absolutely stupid. It's stupid, completely, completely stupid, and. This whole narrative of, you know, protesting and that the UK government has this perception that's like, yes, we believe in protest, we believe the right to be able to protest. Well, there is supposed to be a line, but I think sometimes that line of how far you can protest and where you, when you pass it is very difficult to read. Like I said, I've just given examples about where I think sometimes the line it could be. Some people may be watching this and think that the line is a bit, it uh, could be differentiated. Some people think... That there should be more, more, more nuance. You know, for, I know obviously that the one of the most, uh, one of the most angriest things was the protest uh, on the M4, for example. Um, but obviously, this, these, this protest here in particular, about them, obviously. Um, so this one here is uh, protesters at the Instago Precision Factory in Sandwich, Kent. Um, so this is where obviously they're trying to obviously stop, stop things going or happening uh, with the armed firm protest there. 
beyond firm today um like is that is that something that is disrupting british public lives for example no i don't think it is their intention is obviously to make a stir stir pot up stir pot up but should they face like really bad sanctions or, or very bad prosecutions for doing this i would say no uh, i would say no maybe some people may disagree but i would say no it depends on how where the where is that line it's a difficult one to try and read um on it but generally i would like to know your feedback on how far protesting should be and and if you're someone who thinks that protesting should be banned out right just remember protesters unions are the reason you have the rights that you have today so if you think that stopping all protests is going to make things better you're going to end up nothing more than a slave the rest of your life if you did if there wasn't such a thing as protesting i think that's really really important to highlight do you, do you uh, i'll give you an example do you, do you honestly think that women women who have the right to vote women that have uh some of the women's rights obviously there's always room for improvements but do you think the women women of today have the same rights that they had like 50 years ago for example do you think they just simply asked for the better rights no they fought for them that's just one of hundreds of examples of how important it is to protest in is. So apparently, internal government documents show that the Home Office ministers and staff have tried to influence police and prosecutors to crack down on activists targeting the UK factories of an Israeli arms manufacturer campaigners have claimed. Briefing notes obtained through Freedom of Information request, uh, the FOI, by Palestine Action, shows details of government's meetings predating the 7th of October Hamas attack and Israel's response in Gaza, and intended to reassure EBIT Systems UK, an Israeli arm manufacturer which is subject to a direct action campaign by the Israel campaign group. So they have obviously been telling the Israel, Israel arm manufacturer EBIT Systems here, look, we, got, we know these protests are coming, we need, we need basically more protections, so is what they're is the lines of, of what this gathering here according to this so prosecutions of palestine action activists who say they are trying to pro protect palestinian lives and stop war crimes have led to some convictions including for burglary and criminal damage but also acquitted uh, acquittals by juries and magistrates despite defendants admitting their actions so some have been for burglary and criminal damage okay now I i'm gonna say this here if I, I understand the cause. I understand the cause. And as you guys know, I'm, I'm somebody who generally wants peace in the Middle East. That's my position. Not ceasefire, peace. I want peace. That's what I want. You know, that's, that's something that I, I really want. Um, and obviously, I completely understand their cause. But uh, robbing or causing criminal damage isn't... Like, I understand the emotion behind it. But it's not going to, it's not going to help your, it's not going to help your cause, is what I would say. Um, like they've done this, Palestinian action activists have done this. If they have done burglaries, like literally rob things or smash things up in to try and stop them producing things, do you honestly think that that is going to stop them doing what they're doing? No, they're just going to fix it and carry on while you're going to face a conviction. So th this is this is what I would call a line being crossed here, in my opinion. As well as Home Office ministers attending meetings with EBIT Systems representatives, the heavily redacted briefing notes show that one was attended by Director of Attorney General's Office said to be representing the Crown Prosecution Service. They also showed that Home Office officials contacted the police about Palestine action. Interesting. So there's definitely, yeah. We know that, we know that, let's we know that israel have very good uh strong links within the british government whether it's conservative or labor we know that there's strong links in there now it's entirely possible they may be in, now it's entirely possible what they're claiming here there may be some truth to this but we honestly don't know but what we're going out on the limb here is that we're saying that those with strong connections uh to israel to the israeli government are, in, are potentially influencing our laws potentially allegedly Tim Crossland, co uh, coordinator for Defend Our Jurors, which claims that jurors, absolutely right to acquit a defendant according to their conscience, is being eroded by judges placing limits on what defendants can say about their motivations. That's not right. Um, before we even read the next bit, um, jurors should be entitled to hear exactly why 
uh, protesters are doing what they're doing and why they're going the lengths that they are going. Whatever, they, there should be no redacting whatsoever. They should be told very clearly and understandably why they did what they did, what the reason, why, what their process about, and that they should say why they went the left that they went. And you should be able to do that with no repercussions whatsoever. It should be able to be very clear. There shouldn't be no redactions whatsoever about what about the defendants in this. These disclosures, despite the extensive redactions, are the smoking gun of what has been obvious for a while. Government has been trying to put a stop to jurors acquitting those who expose and resist corporate complicity in violations of international law and mass loss of life. Yeah, this is the thing. Anyone, this is this is what I've got a feeling as well. Because of the, of the, of the justice system and how it works, it's obviously jurors who are randomly selected for jury service. Um, I would say it's a lot more controlled the jury service selection now because obviously, um, obviously those of, of political views can obviously be swayed one way or another on certain things. Um, I've done jury service twice in my life. I don't expect to get called up a third time, uh, probably because of of some of my political views. But who knows? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if jury service is not as random as it used to be. Such political interference as a national scandal goes right to the top of the corruption of democracy and the rule of law by those with wealth and power. A private secretary noted uh, on the date, March the 2nd, 2022, for a meeting between the then Home Secretary Priti Patel and Martin Fisick, the Chief Executive of EBIT Systems UK, said, Palestinian action, actions, criminal activities is for the police to investigate, and that, though they are operationally independent of government, meaning we cannot direct their response. My officials have been in contact with the police about PA. Yeah, this is this is them obviously trying to shut down any kind of any kind of protest. A briefing note dated on the 19th of April last year for a meeting between Chris uh, Phelps, then our home uh, the then our Home Office Minister and EBIT. Director for the Attorney General's Office will be attending to represent the CPS. The CPS declined to participate in this meeting to preserve their operational independence. Interesting. The contents of a section titled Past Lobbying were redacted. The, yeah, the Freedom of Information request that they made, a lot of it's been redacted, so there's a lot there's a lot more here than we don't know. A spokesperson for Palestine Action said the manufacturers of independence were contradicted with the safe centers in which they were made. What's going on behind closed doors demonstrates clear evidence of collusion between government, a foreign arms manufacturer, the CPS, the, the Attorney General Office and the police, they said. This clear abuse of power shows that the state is prioritising the interests of EBIT systems over the rights and freedoms of its own citizens. Documents previously revealed, though the FBI request suggested Israeli embassy officials in London attempted to get the Attorney General Office to intervene in UK court cases relating to the prosecution of protesters. Yeah, this is not right. If this is all true. This month, the UK suspended 30 of 350 arms export licenses to Israel because of clear risk that they might have been used to commit or facilitate a serious violation of international law. A move pro Palestine groups that did not go far enough, but which supporters of Israel condemned and unjustified. A Home Office spokesperson said, We fully respect the operational independence of the police and the independent judiciary, which remains the bedrock of our political model. These meetings took place under the previous government. Uh, Philip, Patel and EBIT Systems were all approached for comment. At the time of publication, only EBIT have responded, saying it was proud to be a supplier to the British Armed Forces. Mm. We can only, we can only, yeah, we can only, I mean, this obviously, this it's a very interesting freedom of information request that Palestine actually have, uh, have, have made here. But while the, it clearly shows, clearly, if, if we aren't already, we know that Israel has much stronger influence within government not just Labour government, but Conservative government, then uh, those from those on behalf of, of of behalf of Palestinian people. And I don't really want to get into the, the nits and witty of, of the Middle East because I've talked about it on previous videos. But what I will say is obviously is that these protesters should not be treated indifferently if they are committing the same if they are committing the same acts as other protesters. Um, if they're not what they're stating there is as robbing or or causing criminal damage and if they're just staging protests they should be treated the same as any other they should be treated the same with any other any other protest but we know that that's not being done no that's not being uh being the case and if and if uh jurors are being uh, are not being given all the information about certain protests uh, certain groups uh, who are being convicted uh whether it's 
Palestine action um, or just stop oil or whatever they're not giving him the full sense of information then then the law is being tampered with here it's not a fair and balanced law because then you're 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 treating one group of people in difference to another and that doesn't sit that's not right in any way shape or form at all and it needs to be called out if it is to be the case so what do you guys think what do you guys make of this story what do you guys make of palestine action do you think yeah that the uk government uh the arms manufacturer behind this do you think there's something to this from a freedom of information request <coughs> more that then we don't know about please let me know your thoughts and more down in the comment section below if you found this video informative please hit the like button we greatly appreciate it. share it across social media so others are not fire this video if you haven't subscribed already please consider subscribing because it really does help support the channel and if you want to go one step further finish to support me and the work that i do here you can do so by becoming a youtube member for as little as 99p or join me on rumble or patreon for exclusive content on those platforms so thank you all so much for watching and i hope to catch you all very very soon